Hi, I'd like to talk about spiritual bypassing, which is a pitfall that it's very easy for people who are engaged in spirituality to stumble into. And I'd like to start with a great quote from Starhawk on this subject. She writes, a defense strategy favored by many spiritual people is an elaborate form of denial an assertion that the individual has gone beyond the shadow qualities of sexuality, anger, passion, desire, and self-interest. Many religions cater exclusively to this strategy. Priests, ministers, gurus, and enlightened masters who adopt a posture of transcendent superiority have great appeal to people with similar defense systems who are able to escape their personal confrontations by identifying as members of an elite enlightened group. And this was in the spiral dance, a rebirth of the ancient religion of the great goddess. Now, I have written uh, at some length about spiritual bypassing in my book, um, The Night Journey, Witchcraft as Transformation. And uh, I'd like to share with you what I wrote. Um, so here goes. Spiritual bypassing is a term coined by John Wellwood, and it means the avoidance of painful feelings by focusing on spirituality instead. It can be very subtle and takes many forms, and it is the shadow side of spiritual practice. The symptoms of spiritual bypassing include a refusal to look at difficult emotions like anger because they are not spiritual. It can also include overemphasis on one's negative traits and an excessive focus on oneness at the expense of individuality. We are all one, so nothing matters, say the spiritual bypassers. Um, it may also manifest as a view that the physical, fleshly aspects of life, food and sex being the most obvious examples, are somehow not spiritual. People who are engaging in spiritual bypassing are just too nice, too compassionate, too tolerant, and often dismiss those who express anger and sadness as intolerant or lacking in compassion. Spiritual bypassing is often accompanied by the view that all is one, and this results in weak boundaries and a lack of self-protection characterised by being too ready to forgive and forget and quite often insisting that other people should forgive and forget when they are actually in the middle of something of their suffering or being oppressed. So what's the cure for spiritual bypassing? Well, the cure for spiritual bypassing is doing the real inner work, expressing your emotions and working through them using safe means of catharsis. And that means bringing them into the conscious self not repressing them or dismissing them or brushing them under the carpet. Some of the more authentic forms of religion and spirituality have techniques for working through your emotions safely. Real embodied spirituality, which I call the inner work, can be hard work. But the good news is that being hard on yourself doesn't need to be part of that process. Being compassionate with yourself but at the same time being real and working with the wounds in your psyche is the way forward. Pretty much anyone who sets out on a spiritual journey will encounter this pitfall, pitfall in one or several of its forms, but forewarned is forearmed. Identifying the likely causes and symptoms of spiritual bypassing is a big step towards avoiding it. Work with your shadow side rather than repressing it, and that will help you. Expressing anger, sadness, melancholy, regret, even bitterness will help to prevent the festering of wounds and instead start the process of cleaning them. By all means, be forgiving if it helps to pre prevent simmering resentment, but make sure that you set boundaries and clear expectations for better behaviour next time. Or just that the person won't ever come near you again if it's been a very bad thing. Um, don't keep allowing the person to commit the same transgression over and over again, forgiving them each time. You're not helping yourself by doing that. 
if they cannot mend their ways, then you need to set up some boundaries for your own protection, such as avoiding seeing them or not seeing them in situations where the violation is likely to occur. Now, I've also written quite extensively about the Spiritualer Than Thou Brigade. Um, and um, and quite often, um, these are people who avoid the word religion um, because it has negative connotations because of certain big bully religions in the playground. Um, but actually, the thing about religion is that you are engaging with a tradition and that you have other people, you have a collective endeavour to meet with the spiritual or the numinous. So I, in the first chapter, Religion, Spirituality and the Inner Work, where I'm defining my terms, um, I write about some of the negative aspects of spirituality. At its best, spirituality, whatever that term means, is a spur to greater compassion, engagement with social justice, and trying to make the world a better place. This used to be called mysticism, which meant something and sought to wrestle and engage with the wider tradition in which it was situated. Many times, organised religions sought to crush the mystics with their call to genuine compassion and their speaking truth to power, and their direct engagement with the divine other or others. At its worst, spirituality is a mess of cultural appropriation, exploitation of the vulnerable, silencing of dissent, sweeping justified anger under the carpet, and offering a pabulum of spurious advice, airy fairy sayings. Come on, we've all seen those sort of new agey memes on Facebook. Uh, <clears throat> now they're getting onto Instagram as well. Uh, and consumer offerings of easily digested wisdom and manufactured artifacts to make you feel spiritual and get in touch with your feelings. Many spiritual directors, life coaches and other self-styled self spiritual leaders, most of whom are not even qualified therapists, prey on the vulnerable to make them feel that they cannot have self-worth without succumbing to a rigorous program of self-help, self-examination, and generally beating themselves up for not being spiritual enough. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've quite frequently encountered people who have an interest in spirituality, um, and I find that they quite often want to silence my anger at injustice because it is not spiritual to be angry. And I find myself bruised and diminished by the, their criticism of my way of being in the world. Any engagement with the intellectual or theological or historical context of an issue is also silenced by these people because that's not spiritual either. These people are so convincing with their peaceful mien and their unfurrowed brows, untroubled by actual social injustice or the suffering of others. These are the type of people who silence those who complain of racism, sexism and homophobia and claim that they are obsessed with race, gender and sexuality, uh, because obviously if we're all one, then there's no, uh, <laughs> then those categories don't exist to these people. Um, some of these people do engage with the suffering of others, but in my view, they only exacerbate it by placing the blame squarely on the shoulders of the sufferer, convincing them that they need to work on themselves and buy whatever the latest self-help book, video, course, life coaching etc happens to be. Some of them even say that the first step to being more spiritual or loving or whatever is to accept oneself. However, the natural response of many people to this is to feel guilty for not loving themselves. Well, given that all the rubbish that our society throws at us for not loving ourselves, um, if it, you know, to try and convince us that we are not worthy unless we've bought, bought the latest product, whatever it happens to be, um, you know, we shouldn't feel guilty or beat ourselves up for not loving ourselves enough. Um, the lack of self-love and self-esteem that many people feel suffer from is caused by alienation from other people, from nature and from life. It will not be solved by increased introspection, but by going out and doing the things you love. If you're an introvert, that might be different from what extroverts love to do. Um, and that's just fine. 
and the first step to accepting yourself is just stop worrying about yourself so much you know I think we're all far too focused on self-improvement and when you know just get out there and do stuff because rubbing up against other people in you know not that we can get out much with covid and everything but you know the first step to um self-improvement is actually to engage with other people um and i also want to add that uh this paragraph the blame for social ills is constantly shifted from the collective to the individual in many contexts Instead of preventing bullying in the workplace, employers hire stress and time management consultants to fix the individuals who have not adapted to the workplace by being sufficiently resilient to bullying and overwork. The same applies to dieting, where the fact that it's difficult to avoid eating fattening food and difficult to get enough exercise to burn it off is laid squarely at the door of the overweight individual uh, as I should know, uh, and hardly anyone bothers to look for social or societal factors that might contribute to obesity, like the fact that it's hard to go for a walk because there's cars everywhere uh, polluting the environment. So um, if you liked what I've read so far, um, do check out my book, The Night Journey, Witchcraft is Transformation. Uh, and my other book, Dark Mirror, The Inner Work of Witchcraft. Um, there's something in here for everyone on the spiritual path. You don't have to be a witch or a Wiccan. Um, obviously, I deal with a lot of stuff to do with witchcraft and Wicca. Um, but I've got whole sections on uh, anti-racism and the environment and the symbolism of the witch in history. So. Um, lots of stuff in here by my book um anyway this has mainly been about spiritual bypassing rather than trying to sell you the book um but uh i do think that i've written some cool stuff in there so there you go um hope you've enjoyed this video uh don't listen to the sweetness and light you know light worker type people out there because they are peddling an illusion um and obviously only listen to me if what I say resonates with you and it makes sense to you. Um, so yeah, have a nice day, place to be.